The Shepherd's Wise Daughter Once upon a time there was a shepherd. Throughout his life he would spend some time in different villages. Finally he came to work at the emperor's sheepfold. One day the emperor commanded the shepherd to take the sheep to the market to sell them and to bring back the money and the sheep. Never ever had the shepherd had such orders, and he grieved and became anxious because he had to sell the sheep and to bring them all back. Never ever had the shepherd had such orders, and he grieved and became anxious because he had to sell the sheep and to bring them all back. Bitter, the shepherd went home. There he met his daughter. What is it, Dad? Why are you so sad? How can I not be sad, my dear? Here is the order the emperor has given me. Don't worry about this one. Go to bed and sleep, and don't pay any attention. How so, my dear? Tomorrow morning, go to the fair with the sheep, shear them all, sell the wool, and return with the money and the sheep, as the emperor commanded you. When he heard the girl's advice, he took courage, slept peacefully, and in the morning took the sheep and went straight to the fair. He sold all the wool and returned with the money and the sheep. The emperor commanded to take the money to the treasury, and he gave the shepherd a heifer because he had done the job well. One day, I don't know how, the cow crossed the border of an estate that belonged to a noble rich man. Give me the cow back, my lord. I'm not giving it to you. It's mine. She trampled on my estates, grazed my grass. Let's go to court. They went to the emperor to do them justice. Enlightened emperor, this is what happened. And this is how the rich man took my cow. The emperor listened to the noble rich man as well, and he did not know how to do justice to. Go home and come tomorrow morning. The one who tells me what is the thickest in the world. What runs the fastest and what is sweeter and softer than anything else, he will be right. They both went home. The poor man was sad, and the rich one was happy. His lady met him. What did the emperor tell you? Well, tomorrow I must tell him what the fattest thing in the world is, what is it that runs the fastest, and what the sweetest and softest thing in the world is, and he will do me justice. What could be fatter in the world than our pig? He has at least a palm of fat on him. Is there anything that would run faster than our greyhound that catches rabbits on the run? That is indeed so, my lady. But what is the sweetest and softest thing on earth? There is a large hive in our bee garden. Nothing can be sweeter than that, honey. And nothing can be softer than our goose down pillows. This was the rich man's guidance, and he was glad and confident that he would win. The poor man returned home gloomy and sighing. What is it, Dad? What's on your mind? Here is, my dear, what the emperor said. Go to bed and sleep without any worries. When he asks you what's the fattest thing in the world, tell him it's the earth. But when he asks me what is it that runs the fastest? Tell him that nothing runs faster than the thought and the eyes. What's the sweetest thing? What's the sweetest thing? Sleep is the sweetest, <laughs> and the pillow is soft. But until you put your hand under your head, you don't sleep well. When he went to the trial, the emperor summoned the rich man first. Sit down and tell me what is the fastest. Your grace. I have a greyhound, which catches the rabbit on the run. I don't think anyone in the world runs as fast as he does. Not true. And I will say that the thought is the thing that runs the fastest. I am here, and the thought runs away to my home where my children are starving. Indeed. What is the thickest thing in the world? I've had a pig in my cage for three years. It weighs over 20 pounds and has a thick layer of fat on it. And again, it is wrong. There is nothing fatter than the earth that holds us. That is right. Now tell me, sir, what is the sweetest and softest in the world? I have a hive loaded with honey in my bee garden. I think that there's nothing sweeter than that honey in the world. 
and nothing is softer than goose down pillows. Now it is your turn, Shepherd. Your Grace, there is nothing in this world sweeter than the sleep, and the pillow may be soft, but you sleep better when you put your hand under your head. Your truth. Go home, nobleman. The cow now belongs to the shepherd. The rich man goes away, and the emperor stops and the shepherd and asks him. Who taught you this? The shepherd, honest and upright in nature, told the truth. I have a daughter, and she taught me what to say. Take this hemp to your daughter, and tell her to weave a uniform for the whole army. Otherwise, she will not keep her head on the shoulders. The shepherd goes home crying. What is it, father? I got rid of one and got into another. Behold, I have brought you a bunch of hemp to make clothes for all the emperor's army. I will do it, Dad. Don't get upset. Go to bed and rest. In the morning, when he got up, the girl gave him a tiny chip of wood. Take it to the emperor and tell him to make me a loom, a shuttle, and all that I need for weaving. For I have no tools to make clothing for the whole army. The shepherd went to the palace. Good morning, your grace. Good morning. What is this? I brought you a piece of wood. My daughter asks you to make the loom, the shuttle, and all that she would need for weaving out of this wood. He handed in the king the chip small like a nail. The king decided to test the girl one more time. He demanded ten boiled eggs from the servants and gave them to the shepherd. Here are the eggs. Tell the girl to put them under the chicken so that the chicks hatch. And no, if this does not happen, she will not keep her head on the shoulders. The grieving shepherd went home. If I knew that, my dear, I would have given up on that cow and all that. I shouldn't have sought justice, because here is what the emperor said, and here is what he gave me. The girl took the boiled eggs and gave them to her brothers and sisters. Eat, because they are from the emperor. Then the girl took two handfuls of corn and boiled them from evening till morning. Here, father, go and take these grains to the emperor. Tell him to sow them, grow corn that we will use to feed the chicks. And when he tells you why these grains have been boiled, old man, you should answer. My daughter said that the eggs you gave her were also boiled. The shepherd went to the palace. Enlightened emperor, I have brought you seeds. My daughter said to sow them. Wait for the corn to grow, mill it, and to feed the chickens. They are boiled. How will they grow? Well, my daughter said, how will the chickens hatch from boiled eggs? The emperor understood that the shepherd's daughter was very skilled and thoughtful. He sent the shepherd to do his job and then asked one of his nobility to inquire about the shepherd's daughter secretly. The nobleman went, dressed like a simple traveler, knocked on the door. No one answered. What to do? He opened the door and entered. He saw the girl on the stove. Don't worry, my lord. Our house has no ears. Are you the only one here? There are no brothers, no mother. I have a brother. He went to change the name to some grains. And when will he be back? If he comes straight back, he'll linger. And if he takes the road around, he'll come sooner. Oh, okay. And where is your mother? She went to the neighbors to make a young girl out of two old women. Here, the noble man got a little confused. Now, how could you get your head around understanding what she meant? It was not for the noble man to ask the shepherd's daughter to explain what she had said. He tried to figure it out, kept thinking, but couldn't make any sense of what she said. Do you know, dear girl, the meaning of the words that you said? I think that if there is no dog in the house, the dog is without ears. Anyone can open the door unexpectedly and enter. Indeed. How then does your brother change his name for grain? Why would he delay going straight and come faster going around? He went to the mill to grind some corn. There is a tavern on the way, and if he passes it, he will have a long delay. And if he goes around it, he'll come home quickly. All right. However, I think your mother is not a witch to make one bride out of two girls. 
The thing is, she makes a new shirt out of the two old ones. What a bummer. Well, have a nice day. Travel safely. The nobleman came back and told the emperor that the girl is beautiful and wise and only speaks in riddles. The emperor's heart missed a beat. He ordered the shepherd to tell the girl to come to the palace neither on horseback nor on the pass nor on the road, nor on the side of the road, neither dressed nor undressed, nor with a gift, nor without a gift. The old man came home crying. The girl listened to the emperor's command and said, Dad, get me a fishing net and a live rabbit. (laughs) And don't worry, wherever I go, I'll be fine. The father brought the girl what he asked for, and she wrapped herself in the fishing net, rode a pole, tucked the rabbit under her arm, caught two doves, and took them with her as well, and set out for the emperor's palace. The dogs rushed to bite her. The girl let go of the rabbit, the dogs went after it, and she went straight to the porch of the palace. Hello, Your Grace. Here's a gift from me. She came neither with a gift nor without a gift, neither dressed nor undressed, nor on horseback nor on foot, because she had come riding a pole. (laughs) Seeing the ghoul's sharpness and dexterity, the emperor said to her, I am taking you as my wife. Henceforth you are the queen. Very well, your grace, but let's agree from the start. If you do not do someone justice, I will do it. Well said. Let it be so. But I will always judge first. They got married and lived a good life. That's how a month to a year passed. One year later, there appeared three people from a village. One had harnesses, another had a cart, and the third had a mare. The three of them agreed to go to the mill. They all got into the cart and went to make floor. On the way, when they returned from the mill, they stopped, fell asleep, and when they awoke, they saw a foal. Thank God the cart has brought a foal. He will grow up and will pull my cart. The one with the harnesses also jumped in. Hey, hey, what a sly fox you are. This harness brought me the foal. From now on, he's mine. Good people, it was the mayor who brought the foal. Nah, isn't true. My cart. My harness! And they all went to the emperor's court and demanded justice. However, the emperor was not at home. The one with the mayor begged. Honest queen, do mercy and judge us, and not vice versa, for I will lose my foal. The empress... Seeing this, decided to judge the case. She said to lock the foal up in a stable and put the latch. Now you and the mare go and stand there aside. And you take the cart to the other side. Now, you with the harnesses, get away at the same distance. Let go of the foal. The owner of the foal shall be the one to whom it comes. The mare was kneeing all this time. What else could she do? Her foal was locked up. When the foal was free, it ran to the mare. All three went away after the judgment. On the way, they meet the emperor. Where are you headed from, good people? From the court. What was your reason? Well, your grace, hear our story and see what has become. The emperor began to think. I do not know how to judge you. I think the foal should belong to the one who first noticed it. The queen judged us differently. When the emperor heard this, he went to the palace and called the empress. Haven't I told you not to judge before me? You did. Why did you dare break your word? Get out of the palace! Hurry! I'm going. I'm going today. But first, before I leave... Let's have a feast, drink, and rejoice as we are parting. Let it be so. After that, wherever you want, you can take whatever you like from the palace and walk away. 
What a feast they had! The empress would drink a glass of water, and the emperor a glass of wine, and in the end the emperor became drunk. Then the empress orders a driver to harness the horses in the carriage. And when they had four horses, she took the emperor, put him on the chair, and said, Go on until I tell you to stop. The driver did as the empress commanded. They went on and on. Suddenly, the emperor awoke and wondered. Where are we going? To my place, your grace. So, what did I tell you? So, what did you tell me? I ordered you to take the dearest thing to you from the palace and leave. That's what I did. What? You are dearer to me than anything in the world. I took you, and I'm going away with you. She outwitted me here, too. Let us return to the palace, judge and act as we know. The emperor returned to the palace, and they both lived in good agreement. All the judgments that followed were made right, though that all spoke that the wise daughter of the shepherd made justice rule. I am armed with a spoon. In a case you should doze, I'll tickle your nose. <laughs>